Byron, one one other thing I want to you know like run by you and get and get your uh, thought on or get your feedback on. And so you know the the crypto community, uh, the you know the crypto part of cryptocurrency stands for cryptography. And so we are b- big believers in yeah, let's do everything we can in Congress and on the legal side to protect uh, civil liberties. There's also some things we can do on the technology side of things, and particularly this encryption thing. So imagine the world where you have no Fourth Amendment protections for your data uh, when it goes to the cloud. And that is not only true for the metadata, but also um, all of these companies can just read the contents of your email messages, right? Fortunately, uh, we have fought some wars in the past to maintain encryption. Now, if you you ran, ran across uh, in some of your studies that the early 1990s and like what we call the kind of the crypto wars 1.0, where there's thing this thing called PGP encryption, pretty good encryption, and it was on the the munitions list, export list. Like it, this is uh, a um, weapon type of technology and we can't actually export it outside of the US and basically, you know, SSL, HTTPS and this encryption technology w- was illegal. Uh, fortunately, this kind of thing got overturned, but there were cryptographers like, you know, Philip Zimmerman who were actually like, uh, you know, p- potentially going to be brought to court over these types of things. And it was kind of like the surveillance state pushing back and saying, no, we want a backdoor encryption, right? We want clipper chips. And so you could do encryption yep. <laughs> in air quotes, but we just want a way to like see into it. And we don't, we don't have to tell anyone else. It'll just be <laughs> it, our kind of thing. So one tool, I guess I would say, in addition to the law and the constitution and Congress and all of these things that I feel like is in the hands of the people is actually encryption, uh, a, def- a defensive tool. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's the reason we're, we're so passionate about it because it gives max power to the defender. And even the NSA with all of their resources cannot um, like hack and brute force attack something that is uh, strongly encrypted. What are your thoughts on that in general? The, the idea that you know, part of the solution here is let's just get um, cryptography in the hands of everybody. So maybe the protection that you're talking about on, on metadata, right? is like, we, we encrypt the contents of our message. Maybe we can also encrypt the metadata too. And then it's not like, it's not up to, you know, whether agencies can see it, they just have no ability to see it. So we don't have to trust them any longer. Do you have any thoughts on that take? Yeah, I think encryption is a very, very important tool in, um, you know, for people who care about privacy, for people who want some security in their digital lives. Encryption is incredibly important. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's funny. There's actually an anecdote in my book about this metadata, encrypting the metadata question. And, uh, it, you know, it, it kind of worked out in a surprising way. So one of the do- one of the things Snowden revealed, um, you know, in, in the slide that got leaked um, and, and in some of the news reports that were published were that essentially these ad networks that are on all of our phones um, were sending the metadata for ads unencrypted. So if you were tapping the Verizon telephone system or the, the international cables that connect continents, which uh, the US government and its allies were, uh, you could read all the metadata from ad networks. And so um, you could see when somebody opened uh, Angry Birds, for example, or, or whatever app was popular at the time, just because, you know, when you open Angry Birds, it would send some message back to uh, its server. And if you were in the right place and you you could intercept this, the the information, um, you know, you could you could say, oh, that this particular device opened Angry Birds right now. And that, that was just the power you so had crazy. as monitoring, yeah, <laughs> monitoring the 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 fiber optic cables network. Now, after Snowden, a lot of these tech companies were like, the NSA is doing what? Uh, so so they encrypted the transmission of, of metadata. So a lot of these ad networks now don't send internet information on the open open web. However, at the same time, or around the same time as these companies were adding encryption, uh, some very clever defense contractors figured out, hey, we could just buy the exact same information uh, from a data mm. broker, right? The, the data broker is now inside the ad network. They're seeing all the bids. They're seeing every time someone opens Angry Birds, um, we got to serve them an ad. Um, we're in, in the network, and we want to we wanna bid on it, but we can actually save all the information that... Every, even if we lose the bid, we can, you know, we can save, um, 
you know, all the phones that are opening Angry Birds all the time. And so the government just started buying this data. So in encryption is not is very, very important, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, it doesn't sometimes solve the fundamental surveillance capitalist sort of motivations of some of these companies and these clever government agencies that find the exact same way to do something through a commercial arrangement. Um, but I would say that for people who, especially uh, on the content side, you know, I, I'm very, I use a lot of encrypted technologies. You know, I, I love Signal. Um, you know, iMessage and WhatsApp aren't perfect, but they are they are encrypted. Apple can't see your communications. Facebook can't see your WhatsApp communications. Um, it, I do use ProtonMail frequently. You know, I, I have a Google account, but I try to primarily use uh, an encrypted email account. None of these things are perfect, right? Your device could be hacked. You can lose your password. You, there's all sorts of. You could be socially engineered. There, there's there's stuff. It's not a hundred percent panacea for everything, but it certainly will give you a lot more privacy and um, a lot more security than than the alternatives. And you know, the funny part is that law enforcement complains constantly about encryption, uh, and you know, they say, "Well, it's going dark and all this stuff." But if you if you were to honestly put Put them on, you know, give them some truth serum and say, uh, you know, are crimes easier to solve in 2023 or 1992? <laughs> I think they would have to conclude that even even if the the user of the, you know, the, the criminal is using encryption, I'm pretty sure crimes are easier to solve today because there's just more information out there. You know, think about the O.J. Simpson case. There'd be, you know, forget the glove or the, you know, you know there, there'd be, you know, logs from his Nest thermostat and his ring doorbell and the, the car would have, you know, logs about when it was turned on. It would, it would be, it would be very possible to convict O.J. Simpson today based on all the metadata that the, you know, smart homes and, and cars and devices all generate uh, in a way that wasn't true in the 1990s. And so, um, you know, encryption is very, very important as a technology and a tool. Uh, and, you know, for people that care about their privacy, I would strongly recommend. By, Byron, services. I think if you got them on that uh, truth serum, not only would they say that, they, they, they'd they also confess to fully encrypting all of their stuff. They are using <laughs> encryption. They're not going to allow their stuff to be unencrypted as well. I mean, they want these civil liberties too. That's exactly right. And it's actually, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, when I was doing this reporting on on the, the government's use of data brokers, I stumbled onto this amazing, like, 300-page FBI document that was, like, a exhaustive list of how to opt yourself out of every data broker and how to set up your phone to be super anonymous. So government agencies, <laughs> people that work in these government positions, yeah. they know darn well More than just, anybody, you know, how much I'm sure. information... Yeah, mm -hmm. and and they are enthusiastic adopters of opting out of data brokers and and making sure their phone emits very little, if any, digital exhaust. Are there any just like tips and, and tricks that that you have? I know you talked about using Proton Mail, using Signal, uh, but either other additional things that you use or things that you've heard um, other people who who are highly informed. Any other tricks that that you sh uh, can care to share? Yeah, I mean, I, I philosophically, I would say that if you're uncomfortable with the social bargain of of, of you know um, paying in your data for services, then you know I would return the internet to a more basic arrangement, which is just to pay for the service that you find valuable. You know, I, I actually pay a few bucks a month for Proton Mail because I think it's a useful and valuable service, and it it cannot monetize my data. It needs to survive in some other way. You know, I donate a few you know, like two or three dollars a month to signal. Um, again, this is a nonprofit organization. It's a tool I rely on. Um, I want to support it and I want to make sure that it's a thriving business. And, you know, a lot of these companies that collect data actually, you know, they're not necessarily evil. They're doing it because there is some public resistance to paying money for things on the internet. And mm. it's not free to make software. You know, it's not free to pay coders. It's not free to rent the server space. It's not free to have a lawyer and an HR person and to draw up a privacy policy and to onboard people. None of this is free. Um, you know, I think there's this sort of techno-utopian notion on the internet that, hey, it, we can all just have volunteers writing, you know, open source freeware. Well, that's not that's not how it's shaken out over the past 30 years. And so if you are uncomfortable with this world, um, I'm not saying that paid services never spy on you or never exploit your data, but it, it at least moves the internet towards an arrangement where, um, you know, 
know, we've returned to the basics of capitalism, which is, you know, you give me something I find valuable and I, I give you money for it. Uh, beyond that, you know, I, I would just be generally careful about look, like permissions. Permissions are very important. You know, you don't need to give every random app access to your location. Uh, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, uh, you know, Apple actually makes it very easy to say, oh, okay, I want an Uber right now. I'll allow once or I'll allow when I use the Uber app, but not 24 seven. You can do that with your weather apps um, or you can just type the location where you're at. So be careful about these permissions because people- right. Why that's um, not standard is beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and people are like giving these random apps from who knows what developer access to their photo rolls, their right. calendars, their contacts. I mean, a lot of that's valuable information. I mean, you may have some very sensitive things in your photo roll or um, on your calendar. If you know, if you're a journalist, it shows who you're meeting with. So do you, do you really want to give, you know, some developer who, you know, you know, people don't have a sense that like a, a human can look at it, but they can, right? Like if, if you give uh, permission to, to some app to look at your calendar, like a a person could look. Uh, are they? Uh, probably not, but they could. Um, so that kind of being careful with permissions, I think, is is super valuable. Um, and you know, there's like there's like all sorts of ad blockers and 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 VPNs. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, there's great resources for it. There's books by this guy Michael Bazell. Um, the the privacy community on Reddit is actually super active and is generally a pretty smart group of people. Like there, there are all sorts of um, you know places you could go if you really want to get advanced on some of this stuff. But the basics are just to be careful with what you put on your phone and definitely be careful about the. I mean, it's, it's hard though to continue leveling up your crypto game. Then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.